Okay, in the previous video, we um, look at the first piece of empirical evidence, and we find that actually um, the size of economy has a very strong predicting power when it comes to, um, you know, the trade volume. Okay, um, we look at this group of uh, EU economies. Um, how big uh, are they? Okay, um, in EU and how much they trade with the U.S. Okay, as a share of the total uh, U.S. and EU trade, and uh, we find this um, upward uh, street line. Okay, um, estimated uh, with just the size of these uh, economies. So um, this tells us, you know, there's a very strong positive relationship okay, between the size of these economies and their trade volume. All right. Now, the second piece of uh, empirical evidence, um, it's, uh, uh, let me show you, um, it's seminar, but the only difference here is we add uh, Canada and Mexico, um, the two labor economies of the United States, uh, to the chart, okay, to the figure, even uh, though they are not really the EU economies, but we just want to, you know, put them there. Um, on the on the figure uh, for comparison okay now you find that um, at, um, at the bottom okay these uh, U economies are still the same ones okay but once we add Canada and Mexico to the figure all of these EU economies have been kind of you know uh, pushed all the way down to the bottom of the figure Okay, so um, that simply means uh, for the given econ the given size of the economy, um, Canada and Mexico trade much more than these EU economies with the U.S. For example, Canada here, um, its economic size um, is very close to Italy, right? Like slightly above 10%, I would say 11% of EU total output. Okay. Um, however, the trade volume between Canada and the US uh, could account for about 95% of the total trade between EU and the US. Okay. For Mexico, again, uh, its size is uh, slightly uh, smaller than Spain. Okay, I would say account for about 7% of the EU total output. Um, however, the trade between Mexico and the U.S. is much more than that between Spain and the U.S. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, the trade between Spain and the U.S. accounts for less than 5% of the total EU-U.S. trade. However, Mexico... Uh, uh, trades more with the U.S., okay, its uh, trade volume accounts for more than 75% of the total EU-U.S. trade, okay. So here, does this mean, you know, the, um, the, uh, the size uh, loses its predicting power or uh, it's not working anymore here? No. The answer is, you know, uh, the, the trading volume between the two economies depends not only about their size, but also about their geographical distance. Remember, we said that uh, Canada and Mexico, we we'll add them here because they are the laboring economy of the U.S. Okay? So the only thing this uh, piece of the empirical evidence shows us is distance matters too. Okay, distance also has a strong predicting power when we look at the trade volume between the two economies. All right, so this relation, trading relationship, um, depends upon more than one factor. It's not just about size or not just about distance. Okay, it's both or probably even more than these two. Okay, all right. Now, um, so far, we, what we learned from um, our theoretical 
discussion in the empirical examination, a uh, gravity model tells us that both economic size and distance, geographical distance matter. Okay. Um, however, we want to point out what matters is not a partic particular mathematical equation. Instead, it's an economic intuition behind the correlation. In other words, uh, what, why size and distance matter is not really because, you know, um, we use the gravity model. So the model tells us that, you know, they, they have the size, they have the distance or the built into the model. So these must be very important. Now, it's actually, you know, that we use the model to fit the actual data. Okay. So if that model doesn't fit, then we have to try some something else. Okay, so do not please do not let the model determine your economic intuition. Okay, you should follow your intuition to find the appropriate model. Okay, which fits uh, the empirical uh, evidence or actual data. All right. Uh, in uh, intermediate macroeconomics, I told my students that um, there are actually three pillars when we understand economic model, okay? any model or theory. Uh, the first one is the economic intuition. Okay? Intuitively, what should be the relationship between two variables and why? The second one is a graphical uh, derivation, the graphs. Okay? So we put, for example, supply and demand, uh, PPF, AD and AS, different graphical models Okay, uh, which gives us a more kind of straightforward visual um, impression about the relationship. Okay, it also make our um, um, economic analysis much easier okay, with these graphs. The third pillar uh, is mathematical derivation, which could be the most challenging one for you guys. Okay, however, it's also the most rigorous ones. Okay because math, again, is pretty um, accurate, right? And um, so we use all three of them, okay? We oftentimes go from the intuition to graphs and finally to math, okay? Now, um, um, one thing I found among our um, uh, economics majors and minors is, you know, once they learn the math, they become, you know, instantly um, kind of, you know, really into the math, okay, keep them really busy with the mathematical calculations. Um, but again, remember, what's really important is actually the intuition, okay? The math is just one way for us to express our intuition in a rigorous way, in an accurate way, okay? So here, let's come back and, and talk about the intuition. We said that uh, there's a positive correlation between trade volume and the size of economies. Why? Why? What's the intuition behind this positive relationship? Again, I strongly recommend you to pause the video at this moment and think about it. Okay? What could be the possible explanations you, you can come up with to explain this? All right. Now let's try this. There might be different ways you can pr approach um, the answer, but here what I used is I would like to you know look at the demand, look at the supply. Okay. Now um, when we look at the demand, the consumers. Okay. In the larger economies, you would find that you know that you get m more consumers, right? So here in the United States, you get more than 300 million consumers, right? In China, India, you get more than 1 billion consumers. When we have more consumers, you find they have a higher demand, okay? Now, there are two um, uh, layers of, of the meaning. Uh, the first one is uh, the higher demand means they have a wider variety of um, demand for goods and services. Okay? In other words, when we have more uh, consumers, they may demand different things. Okay? So they have you know, um, a wider demand of uh, specific goods and services. Uh, if they cannot produce, then they will import from the rest of the world. Okay? Also, when we have a larger uh, quantity of uh, consumers, then 
for certain goods and services, they definitely demand more. Okay? Again, if their domestic production cannot meet the demand, then they will import from the rest of the world. Okay, so that's demand analysis, which in our scenario here, uh, it's about the import. Okay, supply means you know uh, in the uh, large economies, okay, they tend to have uh, more people, more productive resource uh, resources, and uh, more productive capabilities. Okay, so if they produced more than what their domestic demand um, or de domestic customers demands, then they will export to the rest of the world. Okay, so. That's why you know larger economies tend to trade more uh, with each other. Okay. Now um, another relationship is a, a negative correlation between the trade volume and the geographical distance. Okay, which we know from the gravity model. Again, pause the video and think about why. Okay, and trying to do trying to dig deeper. I know there might be some easy answers, okay, and these are the, the correct answers, but probably not um, um, the you know the the thorough list of the answers. Okay, trying to think deeper and figure out you know why distance matters. All right, let's talk about it. So the first one, as I mentioned, easy answer is the transport cost, right? The shipping cost. So when two economies uh, are, far, are far away from each other, of course, um, we have to spend more shipping the goods from one economy to another. Okay, so a higher shipping cost could hinder um, the the trade volume between the two economies. Okay, in other words, um, if we could buy a car from Japan or from Mexico. Then, uh, given you know they, they have the same quality, the same um, features, let's say, and we don't have any specific preference, uh, you know, over one versus another, so we might you know um, tend to buy it from Mexico, right? Because it's it's closer to U.S. market, it's cheaper shipping the car from the Mexico to U.S. than from Japan to U.S. Okay. Um, I don't know what other answers you guys come up with, but you can bring these answers to class. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to give you guys the chances to, to um, share your answers. Okay, now let's check out what I got here. I'm not sure if you still remember, you know, when we talk about the U.S., we said that um, uh, U.S. traded a lot with uh, uh, Canada and Mexico, right? When we talk about Germany, we said it trades a lot with um, its laboring economies, right? Like um, uh, France, Belgium, um, Poland, right? And um, at the same time, you would find that, you know, there's actually a trade agreement among these laboring economies. Okay, for example, we have NAFTA, right? Or the new version of NAFTA now. Uh, between U.S., uh, Canada, and Mexico, uh, in EU, it's basically a free uh, uh, trade zone. Okay, among the EU economies, there's no tariffs, no no trade barriers at all. Okay, and uh, we also have the TT, TPP uh, Trans Pacific Partnership. Okay, we have the um, um, ICP, which we will discuss later, it's a regional trade agreement uh, initiated by Chinese government, and it involves a lot of the Asian, Southeast Asian, and East Asian economies. Okay, so you find that these trade agreement tend to be signed uh, among the labor economies. Again, why? Okay, and uh, so when they stay closer, they are more likely to be involved in the same trade um, trade agreement. That's why they trade more with each other. Okay, why here I list several factors like they may share the same culture or similar culture, speak the same language, they may have more personal contacts. 
with each other. Okay, so we're going to talk about this more in class.